Hey there, and welcome to Large Format Friday. I'm your host, Matt Mirage. If this is the first time you're stopping by the channel, there's a playlist of the fourth season that we're currently working on. And if you haven't subscribed yet, each and every Friday, we're going to be here and we're going to be chatting about something large format. Today, I'm doing a little bit of a vlog style. So if you recognize this space, that's because I'm up here at Midwest Photo, uh, one of the best rental darkroom spaces in all of Ohio. There's been a few upgrades to this space over the course of the last year. We still have the Bessler 45 VXL, that is a condenser type enlarger, and the one I'm going to be printing on today, which is the Saunders LPL, which is a variable contrast diffusion enlarger. Print times can be longer, but it's a little bit more forgiving with dust. Another nice upgrade to the space here is we finally have a nice stainless steel darkroom sink. Uh, it has a standard water outlet and a tempered supply for rinsing and film developing. It's just excellent to have access to this type of stuff. So here in the darkroom today I'm making four different 8 by 10 inch RC contact prints and I've got my negatives here. I've got my print frame right here. Let's head over to the enlarger and get going. So before we get going, I gotta get my safety gloves on here and I'm gonna get my eight by 10 trays all laid out and filled up with our chemicals that we're gonna need for today's process. For normal black and white printing, I like using Ilford Multigrade. This is a already liquid version of a uh, developer. You can also use like Kodak Dectol, which mixes up from powder. I like this stuff for quick printing sessions because it's already there. I just have to dilute it uh, one part stock to nine parts water, or in the case of I'm measuring out one liter, I need 100 mils of this to start. For our stop bath, we're using some Sprint Stop, which also has a one to nine dilution. And then we just have some Ilford Rapid Fix to round things out. So for our developing steps, we're gonna need a minimum of 60 seconds at 20 degrees Celsius for development, at least 10 seconds in our diluted stop bath, and at least 60 seconds in our fixer. Following that, we just need about five minutes of running water wash, or I can use a hypo clearing agent or fixer remover, also known as a wash aid. That can help remove that faster, but RC paper already washes so fast, it's gonna be ready to go. When I'm printing from various different negatives, I tend to like to start by printing with my thickest negative first, or the one that has the highest contrast range or the highest density. These first two negatives that I'm printing from today are both from my Rock House visit at the end of 2020. I had three weeks in a row where I did some winter field work. I can't wait to get out there and do some. Uh, but these two tend to have a little bit higher contrast range, overall just way thicker negatives. These ones are going to uh, probably need very little to no filtration, but longer exposure times. And then as I go through, uh, my last two negatives are going to be a little bit thinner and maybe faster print times or need a higher grade of filtration to go. So before we get printing, I wanted to recap our main printing variables that we need to work with when we're doing black and white contact printing. This can be done with 35 millimeter medium format or large format. But when we're printing, uh, one of the first big considerations is which enlarger we choose. Each enlarger is gonna have its own unique workflow and quirks. It's a good idea to have working experience with one before you start doing like your final work. That being said, with an enlarger, there are some common parts you're gonna to have to take note of. The first of which is gonna be your lens. Your lens is gonna dictate how much magnification you have and your maximum working aperture. This is a 105 millimeter f5.6, but this doesn't matter so much because I'm just projecting light down. I'm not enlarging anything through it but we'll need to note our lens for our f-stop value because we're pretty much controlling exposure. So we'll need to know our f-stop for our lens. We'll also need to know the height of the enlarger. How high up is our light source and how far does it have to travel to hit our baseboard, or in this case, the contact print frame, which is sitting above our baseboard. So we have f-stop, we have height of our enlarger, and then some other factors for exposure we'll need are our time. For this one, I have a Gray Lab 450 timer. This one allows me to dial in seconds, tens of seconds, and tenths of seconds. Most exposures I'm gonna do, I'm gonna to try to keep below 10 to 12 seconds. Uh, if it's way too fast, I'm not gonna have time to do things like dodge and burn, but it will really help in the long run to have good consistent control. The timer's optional, but it really, really helps. And then the last thing that we're gonna be doing in addition to our time, our f-stop, 
and our height, we're also probably going to be playing around with contrast. That's why I chose this multi-contrast enlarger. This one makes things very, very easy because it has a variable contrast printing head, also known as a dichroic head. Basically, it can vary the amount of blue light and green light that are reaching our paper. Remember, black and white variable contrast, also known as VC papers, see two different spectra of light. When you show a black and white paper blue light, it produces those deep, rich black values. When you show a darkroom paper green light, it's going to start to show those flatter, smoother gray values. And the mixture of those two is going to produce a continuous tone black and white print. Now, you're not going to be seeing blue and green coming from the enlarger because I have the safe lights on. In fact, what you're going to be seeing is more of a subtractive color. Let me give you an example of that. I'm going to start by turning the enlarger on. This one has some pretty noisy fans, so my apologies. But once I turn it on, you can see I have my grade open up and there's two different modes for the light. There's print as well as focus. When I change it to focus, it actually turns the light really, really bright uh, and it doesn't have any sort of variable contrast control. But when I move it to print, it gets dimmer and it changes the values. So at my lowest contrast grades, like double zero and zero, I'm getting a very yellow light coming out of it. And when I switch to a higher print grade, like a number five, that's going to give me red light. That red light's going to cancel out the green and give me only blue light hitting the print. This yellow light is canceling out the blue and giving me only green light to my negative. Got my negative out. I'm going to grab a sheet. Got a sheet of black and white paper. And whenever we're printing, everything we do in the darkroom with film photography is shiny side up, meaning the shiny side of the paper emulsion is facing up, and the shiny side, also known as the film base, that is also pointing up. I'm just going to line this up. It's much easier to see the negative, and you can see I've got some thinner bits. Those are going to be the darkest shadow areas there, and then I've got the really, really dense bits there in the center. Stick this in my contact print frame. There we go. Nice. I'm going to dial in a grade one on the enlarger. I've got 10 seconds. You know what? Um, I might even do a smidge longer. I'm going to do 12 seconds. So 12 seconds, one f-stop down. So we're at f8 and inches wise, I think we're at 25 inches. So ready, go. And I'm going to do move my hand in front of that shadow area here and right there. That's known as a dodge. Maybe a little bit more. Cool. All right, let's develop it out, see what it looks like. There's always that huge temptation to pull it out of the tray. Make sure you don't. Make sure you let it go all the way to that 60 seconds. If you want, you can actually let it go a little bit longer. You can go something like 90 seconds, but don't let it go under a minute. You're not going to have good consistency that way. We got a white sheet of paper. No, just kidding. Ooh, look at that. That is not too bad for a first draft. So things I'm immediately noticing that I'm really, really drawn to. My shadows aren't looking as empty as I thought they would. There's still plenty of detail there. And I am not quite getting that white highlight yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try the same exact exposure, but this time taking my grade down to a number zero. It's pretty extreme, but it looks like I may have all the detail I need anyway. Here we go. It's looking very nice. Got a lot of our values taken care of. The white, the snow isn't completely, completely paper-based white, and the shadows are falling off very, very neatly. I think this is going to be, this going to be a good working print for this one. Now this next negative that we're going to be working with is going to be super tricky because it has similar contrast in the brightest areas to the previous negative, except it also has very, very thin areas. Let me get a sheet of paper out. If I hold this white piece of paper behind it, you'll see, whoa, there's some very, very thin areas here over with the rock. This is because I was using a super wide angle lens and those lenses will always have an amount of vignetting. So it's very, very bright here in the center as well as in the sky area, which means I'm probably gonna also need a lot of my burn card to let in just enough light right here. I'm predicting I'm going to need a lower base exposure time, probably around 12 seconds at that number zero, and then I'm just going to start heavily, heavily burning this in. Let's go. Place it in there. When you're doing contact prints, it's surprisingly easy to misalign the negative or have it inverted. 
Okay, so I'm gonna start out with that base exposure at 12 seconds. Checking my grade, grade zero, great, let's go. And I'm gonna just dodge this because I know it's very, very thin. Get a little bit of this too. So before I start burning in, my main areas I wanna burn, a little bit of the stairs and then a lot of it of the trees and sky right here. So I can also change my enlarger from, I'm gonna cover my lens. I can change my enlarger from focus to time. So if I change to focus, it's gonna turn the light on as long as it's on. And we're gonna start burning. So I'm just moving my card. It's very important to keep moving when you're burning. Even if you're burning in the same area continuously, keep it moving. Because if you don't keep it moving, you're going to get some haloing showing up in the shot. It's probably gonna be a lot. We're probably thinking like an extra 10 seconds or so. There we go. Two, one, bring it up, time it down, and we're ready to develop. All right, let's flip our prints and flip our lights on. Oh, that's promising. All right, let's see what it looks like under the light. Oh, look at that. That's, that's pretty good. That's got a lot of the important information already in just one sheet. So this is why I like printing from densest to thinnest in terms of negatives, because I already have something that looks really, really good. Um, my stairs, I think I need a little bit more, a little more oomph on my stairs, but I'm already getting to the point where I'm bringing that sky down. Not enough, it needs a little bit more, but I know what my ballpark is. So I'm probably just like this last print, I'm gonna bring my base exposure time up to 15 seconds, and then I may need as many as 15 to 20 more seconds of burn just to get my sky down from that paper threshold. And I'm just gonna have to tiptoe around this area too. Oh, yes, that's looking quite a bit nicer. I've reduced the value of my stairs by about half of a zone. It's probably not a full zone, maybe in the shadows it is, uh, but it has a nice continuous tone all the way up until that vignetted corner. It, the vignette is not as obvious as it is even in the scan, and the burning here is pretty acceptable. Uh, I still have a bit of clipping in my highlights up here, but this area is much less punchy than it was, and it kind of draws your eye in with the leading line of the stairs. And look at all those nice little triangles converging. That's a finished print. So the second to last negative I'm printing is one from my Ohio Uninterrupted series, and this is Lake Catherine. If you watch my fieldwork episodes, I went back to Lake Catherine uh, in the middle of 2021. It was an awesome day. It was definitely a little bit later than I normally am there. Whoop, I flipped my negative. And as you can see here, this negative is, it's got some density to it, but it was kind of a foggier morning. So I'm probably not gonna print this thing at a zero. I'm gonna try this at a number two, and I'm going to do 12 seconds at F8. Let's get that lined up. And let's hit the lights. Ooh, this is really nice and moody. Definitely not what I was going for, but kind of an interesting interpretation of this particular print. So um, obviously we are way, way, way too overexposed and we are also, uh, yeah, we're just way too overexposed. That's the biggest thing. So let's reduce our exposure and potentially even add a bit of contrast, but it's already looking pretty good contrast wise. So let's take that exposure down. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's, that is like really, really close to where I want to be. I have a clear difference between my sky and my water. Nothing is like 100% jet black yet in here. I may have to uh, tweak the exposure ever so slightly, but all I did is I reduced my straight exposure from 12 seconds to seven seconds. And as a reminder, 12 seconds looks like that, seven seconds looks like that. So exposure as it applies to these prints is not linear. So if I need to decrease an f-stop, I'm not actually taking off half of that time. Uh, it may only need to be four or five seconds, or it may need to be more depending on what side of that curve I'm fighting. Yes, all right, that's, yeah, that's right where we want it. So this was literally one and a half seconds more time than the print before it. Actually, let me get the print in before it. 
So that's only 1.5 seconds difference. Uh, for those of you that are kind of worried that that's too short a time to control, remember you can always adjust the f-stop on your lens and that's going to give you a little bit more working time. But that is, that's exactly where I want this, uh, this print to be. Yeah, and in fact I'm probably going to make another one because I like this particular one. Now, if I remember right, this last negative, this one is Kessler Swamp. This is another Ohio Uninterrupted. This is actually one of the very first shots I made on this project. Uh, this one should print very similar to Lake Catherine. The only thing I'm not sure of just by looking at it is whether or not I'm going to need more or less exposure. It might end up being more, but I'm just going to start with the exact same settings I just had in the enlarger. Now this one was one that was shot with a ton of fog, so it should be very faint as it comes in. I should start to see the bushes emerge before anything else, like these two right there. Oh yes, very nice and ethereal. Now I am getting some of this kind of bleed from having a little bit too much white in there, and this tells me that I think my, ex well, my working theory for this print right now is that I don't need any more exposure, but I'm going to need a change in grade of contrast because I'm getting this sort of, this breakdown of detail. There's my paper base and there's my fog. I want that to kind of blend in a little bit more smoothly. So I'm going to increase my contrast grade from two to maybe three, three and a half. There it is. And all we did differently was we changed our grade. This time we didn't change our exposure. We just ch we went from a flatter contrast, which didn't give us a deep black here and gave us too much gray in the sky, to something with a little bit more blue light, which got rid of a lot of that grayness in the sky. I might need to give me, eh, I don't know. I may need a touch more exposure up here, but this down here on the water is perfect. This is exactly what I was going for uh, when I scanned this up. I just might need to play around up here, but otherwise, we are right where we want to be with this Kessler Swamp. So our rationale in printing today, what I like to do is start with my contrastiest negatives, the negatives that have the highest density and already have a lot of that contrast in there. So once we go in and we find the right contrast and exposure time here, every exposure we make beyond this one is going to be shorter and closer into the ballpark. The first two negatives printed very similarly and our last two negatives were almost identical. We just had a slight contrast difference. That is the beauty of contact printing and working with a consistent developer. Every single one of these negatives was developed with my standard staining developer, which is PyroCat HD, and developed out uh, to achieve the contrast of the scene. So some advantages to working with RC paper. It dries pretty easily, and in open air it's about 20 to 30 minutes, or if we run it through a roller transport dryer. And the other advantage is it's relatively inexpensive, anywhere from a quarter to one third the cost of fiber-based papers. They're not as archival. These prints will last easily 20 to 30 years before they start fading. I don't tend to tone these ones. The effect of toning does not seem to be as much, and archival permanence, I don't know if it really increases it too much there either. Uh, kind of different from what I've shown on the channel before with fiber prints, but I always like to show just something a little bit different. So that about does it. We started with four negatives of slightly different densities and ended up with four final RC prints. There we go. It's this one. These last two uh, were surprisingly similar. They didn't look exactly the same on the light box, but they printed very, very similarly. So I was really pleased with how those came out. If you have any questions about black and white darkroom printing, uh, I'm going to put some reference links in the description below to my darkroom playlist. That'll cover some of the printing videos I've done in other seasons of LFF, but you can also feel free to drop any questions down below in the comments. And for those long form questions, you can always shoot me an email, largeformatquestions at gmail.com. Thanks again for stopping by. Remember, if you don't have a chance to shoot, the winter time is the perfect time to regroup and make some fantastic prints in the darkroom. We'll see you next week for more LFF.